Let's watch her walk just a little bit. Oh, wow. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we have a tarantula that I've actually recently brought in that unfortunately is injured. I'm not really sure the extent of the injuries, but I believe she suffered a really bad molt and it's kind of disfigured all of her legs. Again, I'm not really sure like how bad it is because I have not yet gotten a closer look. She's actually in this 10 gallon, she's burrowed. I am going to be rehousing her though and getting her out just to get like a better look and know exactly exactly what we're working with here. I also noticed that this enclosure has isopods in it and I know that's kind of like a debated thing if isopods work with a tarantula. I really don't have any input on that but I will say I wouldn't test to that theory with a tarantula who has become injured just because I know isopods are going to be eating on remnants of like old food and stuff like that and when it comes to an injured tarantula I don't know if they would start trying to take little nibbles off of her or if she could even really fight them off so I'm not really sure about any of that so if you know anything feel free to comment it down below but I just feel like I should probably rehouse her into something smaller where I can monitor her better where there are no isopods bothering her and also notice there's some mushrooms in here growing which isn't harmful or anything at all but it just it doesn't look pretty so we're just gonna kind of give her a new start and take a, a look at how extensive these uh, damages pretty much are. However, before we do all that, I actually wanted to rehouse Mimic You, my Honduran ghost milk snake. The reason why is because I actually want to use this enclosure for the new tarantula. I think that these are really great for the size of tarantula she is. And Mimic You has actually shed a couple times and grown just a little bit. So I think it's time to upgrade into this little 10 gallon. It's just a short 10 gallon. I actually had beetle juice in it up until a couple days ago. I rehoused beetle juice. Anyway, let's just go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so basically we are just going to be using this enclosure. I think this will be a really good size for Mimic You for now because, well, you'll see how big they are now, but I think this will be really good. It's small, but still a little bit more spacious than what we have now. Also, if you want like a backstory on why I'm keeping Mimic You and like smaller enclosures and like stepping up more and more and more as they grow. Refer to the video where I got Mimic You and I think I explained it a little bit more after a bad experience I had with a different snake. Anyway, we will just be using some Aspen. Now I am usually a little bit more generous on the Aspen than this, but we've had some issues feeding Mimic You. If you'll notice, uh, we actually took the background out of this enclosure because she would like hide behind it and we couldn't get her out to eat like ever. Um, it's still a little difficult to get her to come out to eat, but like we're getting better about it. So this is still a good amount of Aspen. Normally I would put more, but this should work for now. I am gonna be taking this plant. And I'm actually just gonna turn it on its side. That way like she can still hide it and stuff. I'm gonna use just this little coconut house. And then I'm gonna be using this water dish. It might not be the coolest looking one, but it actually is like a little opening on each side that they can actually like go inside and use it as a little shelter, but also a water dish. So yeah, it looks kind of silly, but it'll be a nice little hide and water bowl. And yeah, super simple, nothing too crazy, but I think it's gonna be a good setup, a nice little upgrade, not the biggest, but definitely more space and a little bit more bedding. Let's go ahead and get her over into this enclosure. You're gonna see how fast she is. And look at that, she's knocked over her water dish. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think she's under this. There she is. All right, oh, 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 she's getting, there she goes. She hates, like she's getting better, she's getting better. She's getting better. But here we go. Hi. There she is. No, you cannot go up my sleeves. <laughs> Handling is a work in progress. See, once we get her like tamed down, she chills out. It just takes a minute of that like high speed. But yeah, see, there she is. So I guess we'll just put you in here. 
gone. <laughs> she really reminds me of a sandworm from Beetlejuice. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in the bedroom and plug her back into the thermostat. But yeah, let's go ahead and clean out her old enclosure and get a better look at this new tarantula. Okay, so this is the cage. We're just gonna leave the little heat pad on it. Just, we're not gonna like plug it in or anything, but I did wipe it down. There's still like a few little pieces of aspen, but it's fine. I'm not really worried about anything being passed between my snake and my spider anyway. Ugh. I actually do still have the background I could put back in here, but I don't really want any feeders getting away and hiding behind it. Like in the state that she's in, it would just like really worry me that, that that could happen. Basically, I'm putting her in this enclosure. I'm making it really simple and I'm gonna baby her until her next molt. Um, I'm very actually happy about the species. You guys are gonna be so excited when you find out what species she is. Like if you guys remember Mew, if you've been here since Mew, like you will really be happy about the species she is. Anyway, we'll do some moss, some leaf litter, mix it up. I think I'm going to steal this piece of cork that was in with my snake. Maybe we'll do it like this, yeah. I do have this little fake plant from Tarantula Cribs. I'm going to actually put that in with it. Also have a water dish I will just put over here. Yeah, maybe I'll do this little rack. Yeah, okay, so really simple. Again, I'm not going out of my way. I'm just doing a really easy setup, something for her to hide behind. This will be up against the wall, so I mean, it's not gonna be like open, letting light in. And then just, you know, a little bit of decor, but we're not, we're not going crazy because basically I just want her to make it to her next molt. We can do a more intricate enclosure after that. If she does okay with it, I'm a little worried about it. I don't know, I don't know. So let's get a better look and kind of get a better idea of the situation that's going on with her. Okay, so let me show you guys this enclosure. So this is just a 10 gallon. The decor is fine and everything, but we do have a little bit of a fungus issue going on over here. As you can see, there are mushrooms. And then inside the mushrooms, you will see there are actually isopods. So these look like the powder orange ones, I believe. There's also some like little mite springtail things. It's pretty much just like a bioactive setup. So yeah, I know isopods are like a debated thing to keep in tarantula enclosures. I personally don't trust it. And I think part of that has to do with the fact that I remember hearing a Tom Moran podcast where he talked about not trusting it. So I don't really know much beyond his opinion and the points that he had made, but I just feel like it's a little risky, especially when there is a tarantula that has suffered a bad molt. I have not seen her leave her burrow, whether it be because she's just not active or because her legs are messed up. I have not seen her leave her burrow. So we're gonna downsize her into this. I don't know if she'll make another burrow. I feel like she might just hide behind that cork. I kind of don't want her to make another burrow. I kind of hope she hangs out above the substrate just so I can monitor her a little bit better, see like what's going on, uh, make sure she's hydrating and eating and getting ready for that next molt that will hopefully repair her legs. But I do have to say, I have had tarantulas in the past. Bad molt bubbles is the first one that comes to mind where I bought her with an injury. She molted and had a wet molt. She did recover a little bit, but then she molted again and had an even worse molt, and then she passed away, probably from some sort of internal injuries. So when they are injured or they have had a bad molt, sometimes every molt after that will just be worse, which is not good. Um, I'm really hoping that's not the case because this is a species that is very special to me. If you guys remember, I had a female E. campus stratus named Mew. She was my favorite tarantula for a period of time. Unfortunately, I lost her to impaction. In fact, it's one of my most popular videos where I talk about losing her to impaction and just kind of shined a light on that whole situation. Well, I mean, at this point, I don't even know if it matters. I can't believe she's walking now. Let's get her water now.
I was just really devastated. And finding an Ecampus stratus is like very difficult. Ecampus stratus aren't the easiest species to come by and they're not the cheapest either. So I fortunately did have a friend purchase four Ecampus stratus slings for me, which I still have all four and all four are growing really well. But the downside to that is that they grow extremely slowly. So even though I have these four really awesome Ecampus stratus slings, it is not just yet comparable to my beautiful adult female that I did have. But yeah, anyway, she is an Ecampus stratus and I am so happy to have another adult female, even though she obviously has some sort of issues going on. I'm hoping we can like nurse her back into like this beautiful adult female. I'm hoping this isn't the end for her. I don't think that this is something in my control to be really honest with you guys. I don't think anything I do can really make her recover if she's not going to. I'm Like I said, I'm going to make sure she's hydrated and eating and watch her, but that is all I can do. So we're just going to cross our fingers and hope that she has a better molt next time and then a better molt after that and eventually is, you know, a healthy adult female E. campostratus sometime in the future. I can tell from in her burrow, her legs are kind of twisted and stuff, but I think I think she can bounce back from it. So I'd like to get a better look and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so this is gonna be kind of a little difficult because I don't really want this to cave in on her. I wonder if I can, I'd like to just like poke her out like this. Oh, that's so weird. It's like um, her exoskeleton. It doesn't really have hair. So it makes a little bit of like a clinking noise. Do you hear that? Let's back her up into this cup right here. got her out. Awesome. That actually went much easier than I was anticipating. I feel bad because I don't like stressing them out, especially when there's something wrong with them, but this will give us a better look. Can I get you out? There we go. What a pretty girl. But yeah, you can see her legs are like pretty messed up. They have, um, you can see her like exoskeleton. The fur is kind of rubbed off on them. And then right back here is like the one that's like really messed up. You can see, um, oh, there we go. Not trying to scare her. But yeah, that back one is like really messed up. I really, I, I'm surprised she hasn't dropped the leg because it's so twisted. See, it's like backwards even. And then there's the front ones. The front one's a little messed up too. But not too bad. I mean, I, I do think she can come back from this. Like, I don't think that this is a death sentence because like with bad molt bubbles, like her injuries were on her abdomen and her abdomen is like much more fragile than the legs. They can live without a couple legs, but you know, they can't live without their abdomen. They need their abdomen to be intact and they can live without legs. So, I mean, honestly, if this was bothering her that much, she could easily just drop it on command. Let's watch her walk just a little bit. Oh, wow. She can actually move pretty fast. Okay, interesting. There we go. So gentle. Oh my God, you guys, I love her. Oh, she's so pretty. Even though she's a little messed up, she's still so pretty. So this girl I'm gonna name Evie. <laughs> We're gonna stick with the Pokemon theme. And yeah, that is it. I'll keep you guys updated. Like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're not, and you want to be. Don't forget I'm an Instagram that I use probably way too much as I turn to that cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast and a Teespring. It is all linked down below. And I will see you guys soon. Let's get into the Patreon pet pick.